Hello and welcome to my channel Paul Ames Visual Journalist and today we are looking at the Sigma 105mm f2.8 DG DN macro lens with a slight twist because we're going to compare it to the Sigma 105mm f2.8 EX lens which was introduced all the way back in 1999. I bought this lens, the EX that is, on the recommendations of my, one of my photography lecturers um, and he reckoned it was one of the best lenses he'd ever used and uh, I bought it and I used it solidly um, until 2016. It was a great lens. Um, I used it for product work, macro, um, some portraiture, uh, fine art reproduction, copy work. Used it an awful lot. I only stopped using it because I changed system. When you pick up the uh, 105EX, it feels very well made. It's light by modern standards. That's because it doesn't have uh, as much uh, glass in it as modern lenses. But it has a nice heft to it. It's covered in that funny black crackle plastic finish that Sigma used for their EX lenses at the time. It's got uh, gold stripe on the front of the lens and the graphics and the text are all mixed, done in a mixture of white and gold. It's very sort of 1990s bling. Um, the standout feature for this lens is that the fact that it has got a uh, manual focus clutch. And... Um, this is good because a lot of macro photography is done with manual focusing. And the great thing is, is when you engage this, um, the lens barrel extends as you focus through the range and the lens barrel is marked with the various reproduction ratios um, along the way. And this means that you can set your magnification ratio quickly and easily and uh, it is really a delight to use. It is one of the lens's best features. The autofocus isn't bad. Um, it's pretty par for the course. I mean, it's slow, but then most um, macro lenses with autofocus are slow to autofocus. Um, the lens is noisy. And, um, yeah, you know, this was cutting-edge technology back in 1999. So let's see how the 105 DGDN compares. The DGDN is uh, part of Sigma's art series and so shares the same gloss black finish with the understated white graphics and lettering. There's no gold bling here, just a minimalist, workmanlike appearance. And it's quite nice looking. The body is made out of combination of metal and uh, Sigma's thermally stable composite. A kind of plastic with thermal expansion properties which are the same as aluminium. There are a number of rib panels um, to facilitate a uh, secure grip. And when you pick the lens up, the first thing you notice is it is very heavy for its size. And that is because there are a lot of glass elements in there. And as I've said before, a cubic centimetre of glass weighs more than a cubic centre of centimetre of concrete. The DGDN is considerably longer, about 40 mils longer than its older sibling, but it's important to remember that it is made for mirrorless cameras, 
put a Sigma MC11 or a Metabone Smart Adapter 5 on the EX and they're virtually the same length. Another big difference is that the newer lens focuses internally. There's no extending barrel and this helps with weather sealing. The EX, by the way, is not weather sealed. The large ribbed focusing ring is of the fly-by-wire type. There's no pulling it back to engage manual focus. So consequently, there are no hard stops when you turn the lens. There's no feedback as you focus on your image, other than the, what you see through the viewfinder or through the EVF. And as I said, macro photography is one of those areas where you do use manual focusing an awful lot. And um, using the DGDN is not a very pleasant or positive experience in my book in manual focusing terms. There are a lot more controls on the newer lens. There's an AF-MF switch. There's a focus lock button that can be reprogrammed. There's a focus limiter switch with three settings. 0.295 to uh, 0.5 of a meter, then 0.5 of a meter to infinity, and then 0.295 to infinity. There's a switch for declicking the aperture ring, which means that uh, there is an aperture ring, which is quite a nice departure. And there's a locking switch for the aperture ring. Now, I've not used the aperture ring since getting the lens. Um, I leave it locked in the automatic position, for preferring to uh, control the uh, lens aperture from the camera body. Right, let's look at the optical performance. This is where we really start to see what has changed in terms of lens design over the years. Wide open, at f2.8, the DGDN is sharper and more contrasty in the centre of the frame. The corners are sharp, but the contrast is lower. The EX, on the other hand, is softer and has less contrast in the centre, and the corners are not only softer but display prominent chromatic aberration and have a warm tinted vignetting. Older Sigma lenses were known for having a warmer look than other brands, and here it is clearly visible. By f5.6 the corners of the DGDN have improved considerably, and the centre is even sharper. The centre of the frame for the EX has improved, but not to the same extent as that of the DGDN. The corners of the EX are still soft and exhibit vignetting. At f8, the DGDN really hits its stride and produces its best optical performance with both the centre and the corners having excellent sharpness and contrast. The EX has reached its best centre performance, but it's still not as good as its younger sibling, and the corners have improved slightly, but vignetting is still present. At the aperture of f11, the DGDN's performance remains the same as it was at f8 in both the centre and the corners of the frame. The EX now turns in its best performance, but some vignetting still remains. At f16, diffraction is starting to take effect on both lenses. Interestingly enough, the EX in both Canon and Sigma SA mounts will stop down to f45, but you really wouldn't want to use it, as it looks like somebody has smeared Vaseline over the front lens element. In terms of chromatic aberration, the DGDN is exceptional. It's well controlled for both axial and transverse chromatic aberration, and even at magnifications of 200% I could not observe any. The EX is really showing its age here, as both types can be seen, and the transverse chromatic aberration is very prominent. The EX, despite having that recessed front element that acts as a de facto lens hood, suffers badly from halation and veiling flare when specular light sources were in the frame. The DGDN has better lens coatings, which mean that the halation and reflected glare is minimal. Let's look at the bokeh. 
Both lenses at f2.8 have nice round bokeh balls in the centre of the frame and at the edges exhibit that elliptical cat's eye effect. The tonal transitions are nice and smooth, there's no busyness or swirly effects. At f4, the EX is starting to develop polygonal balls while those of the DGDN are still nice and round. At f11, the bokeh balls in the corner of the DGDN are starting to develop into sun stars and the effect on the EX is more profound. The nine rounded aperture blades are producing much more pleasing bokeh effects than the eight straight ones of the EX. Autofocus is where there has been an enormous improvement in performance over the last 22 years. The EX, when mounted on the Sony A7R2, with either the Metabones 5 Smart Adapter or the Sigma MC11 just won't autofocus. When you switch the camera on, the lens racks through its entire focus range, depending on where the limiter is set, of course, and then does nothing. So to test the AF performance, I had to mount it on a Canon EOS 6D, which wasn't known for its blistering AF speed when it was introduced. I shot several sequences with the focus limiter on at f2.8 of me walking slowly towards the camera with it set on continuous autofocus and I obtained a hit rate of between 70 and 75 percent. The video AF was a non-starter and it just wouldn't focus but to be fair that is a problem with the video autofocus of the 6D. With the DGDN mounted on the Sony A7R2, the stills burst rate for AF averaged out at about 94%, which is pretty impressive. The DGDN handled the video AF test with aplomb. It was smooth and positive, keeping up with me moving about in the frame. The AF was noisy and was picked up by the shotgun microphone mounted in the camera's hot shoe. Speaking of noise, the EX was incredibly noisy. While I sum up, I'll put a slideshow of some of the sample images I've taken with the uh, Sigma 105 f2.8 DGDN macro lens. But the conclusion shouldn't really come as any surprise. Time has marched on and the advances in lens design, manufacturer of uh, exotic lens elements, and autofocus technology are easily apparent. The Sigma 105 f2.8 EX Macro was considered a very, very good lens in its day, and even now it's remembered fondly on photographic forums. The DGDN is just at another level of performance, both in terms of optics and autofocusing. The EX, while being optically suited to a number of tasks, is let down by its autofocus performance. Anything that moves quickly or erratically and the lens just can't keep up. The DGDN on the other hand can confidently be used as a general purpose short telephoto with a wide variety of subjects as well as being a dedicated macro lens. The only area in which the EX is superior is in the handling department. The manual focusing experience and the ability to use preset magnification ratios make the lens a joy to use manually. The DGDN is clearly aimed at the autofocus only photographer, which is a great shame because otherwise it is a cracking lens. So if you have a Sony FE or one of the offerings from the L Mount Alliance, then the lens is worth a look at. Well, to be frank, it's your only option in at the L mount. It is also a worthy competitor to the Sony 90mm f2.8 FE Macro OSSG at a cheaper price. Would I recommend it? Yes, I certainly would. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I hope you found it um, useful. And uh, I hope you will join me in my next video. Thank you. Goodbye.